Howdy! Today we are looking at the first book in the Eisenhorn Trilogy. It's called Xenos, and it was uh, suggested by my patron Brother Santodes, and anyone who's familiar with the name Brother Santodes is probably seeing where this is going. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So the Eisenhorn novels take place in the Warhammer 40k universe, and if you're not familiar with that, it's basically just a really expansive uh, universe. It originally started as a tabletop game, and then since then it's expanded into, you know, video games and books and stuff like that. And I, I'll come right out and say that I am not that familiar with Warhammer or Warhammer 40k. Uh, I have heard some stuff about the lore, and it does sound like a pretty interesting setting, and I mean, it's, it's not that I have uh, purposely avoided it or anything, it's just not something that I've gone out of my way to look at so far. But I will say that, all that said, this book's pretty great. So it follows this guy named Gregor Eisenhorn, who is a member of the Inquisition, and my understanding is that the uh, humanity lives in this gigantic empire spanning like thousands or millions of worlds, and they're ruled by this god emperor guy who humans, well, they worship him as a god, and the Inquisition you know, they sort out heresies and such, but they also protect humans from, like, demons and aliens that wish them harm. So, they are not exactly good guys, they do a lot of nasty stuff, but they do overall protect humanity. And, uh, Gregor Eisenhorn is a member of that, and it, it's difficult to really give away that much, or to talk about it without giving away too much, because this is very much a mystery story. Like, it starts off with uh, Gregor chasing after someone, a criminal that he's been in pursuit of for a while, actually, and then he catches him, but he realizes, okay, there's something much bigger going on, there's a much bigger threat that I need to deal with, and most of the rest of the book is him uh, investigating leads and going after that and running into trouble. So, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like any other noir uh, detective story where you have this hard-boiled dude who's willing to do anything it takes to get the job done, and he's not quite in over his head, but he is in a very dangerous situation, and he's just trying to figure out the truth of things. The only difference is that there's aliens and psychic powers and a, a lot of weird stuff. Like, I'll come right out and say it. Uh, as I said, I'm not that familiar with Warhammer's lore, and this book does not do a great job of getting you caught up. Like, there are parts where I could follow along just fine. There are parts where I could almost kind of sort of follow along, and there were one or two very small bits where I was totally lost. And I want to emphasize that those bits where I was lost were, they, they were very small. You know, like, if you are even a little bit more familiar with Warhammer lore than I am, you'd probably get through this just fine. And if you're a fan of Warhammer, then yeah, you'd understand everything. It's just, for me personally, and for anyone else who's not really that into the franchise, yeah, there's gonna be some uh, growing pains that will make it harder to get in there. I, I just mixed up my metaphors, but whatever. And honestly, I'm willing to look past any issues I had with getting into the setting because the story and characters are really, really solid. Like, I really liked Eisenhorn as a protagonist. He was pretty great because, uh, one, it's told from his first-person perspective, and at first I wasn't sure how I felt about that, but as it goes on, he spends more and more time talking directly to the audience, and he, he has a nice sense of humor. He had a couple of good lines that got a laugh out of me, and he has this, uh, I'm not sure how to put it, but like I said, it's not uncommon for the protagonist of the t this type of story to be some hardened badass who does whatever it takes to get the job done, and that occasionally means making some uh, morally gray decisions. Eisenhorn is, like, fully aware that he does some pretty nasty stuff, but he does straight up justify it to himself and to the audience by saying it's for the greater good. Like, very early on, he leaves someone to die when he could have saved her, and because he needed to go after the bad guy, and he straight up says to the audience, if you think less of me for doing that, that just means you couldn't be an Inquisitor. Like, you, you don't have what it takes. I have what it takes to save humanity, and you don't. And it's, a uh, it's pretty interesting, actually. Like, you, he knows he's not the most morally upstanding guy, but he still does what needs to be done. It's, it's an interesting way of looking at the character, and maybe it'll change as the series goes on, because there are more of these, but in this book, it was just 
Uh, I mean, it immediately got me into him. And then, even after that, he is, like, an intelligent guy, because, you know, obviously he's essentially a detective who has to follow leads and stuff, so you'd have to be at least somewhat intelligent to do that. And while he is a badass who gets out of fights and or gets into fights, but fights his way out of them at a couple of points, you never... He's not so much of a badass that you ever feel like he's not in any danger. Like, you know the entire time that if he makes one wrong move, he could be killed. Because while he is dangerous, and while he's badass and powerful, there are horrible, horrible things in this universe that could tear him apart without even thinking about it. The other characters are fun, too. Like, there's this anti this person with like anti psychic powers called Elizabeth or Elizabeth which uh, again that's one of those bits that I didn't 100% understand but I'll I'll roll with it and then there's Amos who is Eisenhorn's well that's his sidekick essentially and he was kind of fun too I don't I don't have much to say about him but he added things to the story he never felt like he was useless he was uh, actually contributing to solving the mystery and stuff so I liked him and most of the other characters, they just sort of came and went, but they served their purpose well. And as for the story, it's, well, it's a pretty good mystery. You know, it uh, makes sense how there really is this big threat out there, and you aren't sure exactly what it is at first, but as it goes on, you realize more and more the gravity of the situation, and you're like, oh, yeah, they gotta, they gotta nip this in the bud before it gets really bad. And by the end, uh, without giving anything away, it does leave itself open for a sequel, but it does more or less uh, wrap things up in this one little package. So I liked that. I like not having to uh, commit myself to a whole series because, you know, I just have a whole lot of other stuff that I need to be reading right now. Now, I gave this book four stars on Goodreads, and I had to think about that for a while. Part of me really wants to give it five stars, but after thinking on it some, I don't think it quite connected with me on that level because, as I said, um, what it sets out to do, uh, you know, be a mystery in this sci-fi universe where we follow this <laughs> essentially a grizzled old detective. Like, I mean, I hate to keep referring to him by that, but he does fit into the archetype pretty well. But it, yeah, it's essentially that sort of mystery, and that it does that amazingly well. And if you're a fan of Warhammer, that probably just adds more flavor to it. But the thing is. That's not really my favorite type of story. Like, I, I don't hate it, it just doesn't immediately grab me. And so, something like this, just, while it, uh, while it succeeds at what it sets out to do, it does it amazingly. Like, you could hardly find a single mystery story of this type uh, that does this better. It's just not really my cup of tea. And the fact that it's in the Warhammer universe, which I'm just not that familiar with, and like, again, I don't have anything against it, I've just, I'm not familiar with it, I haven't, uh, I wouldn't even know where to start uh, if I wanted to play the game, I don't really know anyone who's into stuff like that, so I'm just not that familiar with it, and so the setting couldn't quite grab me. Like, I mean, I felt that it was a really big and very strange setting, so there's that, I guess, but it just never quite clicked with me the way that it probably would if you know about Warhammer. And so, for this book, I would recommend it to, if you're looking for a mystery thriller type thing, 100%, yeah, you'll probably love the hell out of this one. Uh, if you're a Warhammer fan, y you might. I, I don't know, it depends. I don't know, but if you're a Warhammer fan who is looking for that type of mystery thing, this will probably blow you away. Like, you will be so impressed by this, because th this is... Uh, I believe it's the first of a trilogy, or four books, I'm actually, I don't remember 100%, but uh, if the rest of the trilogy is like this, then it, it's a great trilogy. <laughs> huge, huge, huge thanks to everybody who watched this far, and especially to my patrons whose names are here, and my $10 and up guys are Oppo Savalainen, Ava Toomer, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Deanna Dahim, Embis, Emily Miller, Evan Stigall, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Madison Lewis Bennett, Nature Boy, NB Star, Rees E. Raula, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Vacuous Silas, and Vevictus. You are all really great because without you, well, quite frankly, I wouldn't be able to do this. And if you want your name up here, and if you want stuff like early access to my videos, then consider becoming a patron. You know, it's all it takes is a dollar a month. 
And if you can't do that, then just sharing this video around, liking on it, commenting on it, you know, all that stuff. That helps too. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.